So the AMRC was founded uh, in 2001 uh, when Professor Keith Ridgway uh, from the University of Sheffield in the Mechanical Engineering Department uh, started talks and uh, collaboration really with, uh, with Boeing. Um, it, it was there where it all started, um, really to bridge the gap between academia uh, and industry and, and, and create some more industrially focused uh, research. So the AMRC was founded. Uh, it was founded at the Sheffield City Airport uh, in, a, in a very small little building uh, before it grew out onto the advanced manufacturing park. Um, really, the idea of the AMRC was to use new tools, uh, well, methods, means, tools and technologies uh, to, to, to bridge this gap to academia. So, Factory 2050. Um, we've been very lucky that we've been, uh, we've been given some money by the Higher Education Funding Council um, to, to create a state-of-the-art factory. Um, we've termed this Factory 2050, um, and really it's, it's to focus on the most important sectors uh, to UK manufacturing and to the UK economy. So historically we've looked at the aerospace industry, um, but starting to look at aerospace, automotive, nuclear, medical, uh, and, and, and a few others as well. Um, so in this presentation, I'll just try and introduce really some of the ideas and the drivers behind the factory uh, and what we're hoping to achieve. So to set the scene, uh, and, and not really to give a, a history lesson as such, but, but here's Sheffield of old. Um, the Orgreave Colliery, um, in fact, 30 years yesterday was the, uh, was, was the anniversary of the Battle of Orgreave. Uh, so 5,000 picketing miners uh, went into battle with uh, not only the South Yorkshire police, but I believe police forces from about 10 counties. Um, it's a strike, you know, with the miners' strikes. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a bad time for Sheffield uh, when a lot of the industry was going down the pan. Um, a lot of engineering and a lot of the manufacturing business was tending and shifting towards the service industry. So in fact, just up the road, uh, we've got the Meadow Hall Shopping Centre, uh, and this was the site of the Hadfields uh, steel, uh, steel Factory. And at that same time, uh, over 100,000 jobs went down to 9,000 jobs. So it, w it was a, r a real tough time for the Sheffield industry. Part of the reason, and this is the same site that you, uh, you, you saw in the last slide, uh, but regenerated. So from 2001, uh, this site has grown. We were the first uh, first building on this on this site on the advanced manufacturing park at uh, just outside of Sheffield. Really, it's it's Rotherham, um, and, uh, and and this collaboration with industry was born. So we've got the AMRC factory of the future in the centre there. Really, the uh, the hub of the activities, uh, the heart of the AMRC, uh, where most of the machining, which is one of the bigger groups, uh, resides. We've got the composite centre. We've got the nuclear AMRC, which is another of the uh, high-value high value manufacturing catapults. We've got the KTC, which is the Knowledge Transfer Centre, uh, a conferencing facility, and a facility now where uh, industrial doctorates and master's students are being taught. Uh, we've got CTI, which we've quite recently bought out, Castings Technology International. Um, and that's, in fact, the second building of CTI is, in fact, where, uh, where my group fo fo focusing on robotics and automation uh, large volume metrology, uh, augmented reality. That's, what, that's where we sit, up at the top of the hill, just outside of this shop. And we've got the training centre. Um, so the training centre was uh, just opened in January of this year. Um, it was really a, as, as a cry from industry in the local area. Um, there's a Rolls-Royce facility uh, we can see just at the top right. In fact, I, ha I haven't labelled it uh, as it's not part of the AMRC. But when the Ro Rolls-Royce facility was built, that there was a cry from industry to say, well, a lot of our engineers are going to go and work for Rolls. So the Sheffield, the Sh Sheffield City region, although it's a coup, one day we've got a Rolls factory and everyone was very happy. Um, and the next day, you know, th th there was uproar that, that, that Rolls-Royce may be paying a little bit more money than local industry. So what we said, well, we'll try and get the skills back to the area uh, by developing a training centre. Um, so opened in January of this year, we've taken on 200 students this year, uh, and that hopes to rise to about 300 in the coming years. Uh, guys and girls of ages of 16 to 24, uh, pushing them through apprenticeships uh, and, and 
part-time PhDs, all sponsored by industry. So the idea is that they can come out of the come out of their education with, with no debts and with a real practical experience. So what we're looking to do is develop the talent, we're looking to use high technology and bridge the gap. And as it says at the bottom, uh, we look to engineer to create better, cheaper, faster and greener. And, and generally, if we can hit the first three of those, uh, of, of, of those things, then, then we can achieve the greener at the end as well. So. I showed uh, Sheffield 30 years ago and Sheffield as it is today. Um, and really what I wanted to push on to is, is the, the drivers for our future factories and how, how might they look in 30, uh, 35 years' time. So we're seeing a, a, a trend for high variation production, uh, customization, personalization, different configurations of parts. So really the factory, the emphasis around the factory is high reconfigurability. Um, we're looking to, to improve ramp up speeds, ramp up speeds and ramp down speeds. How can we react to the market and really, uh, you know, really be able to, to, to react to what the market uh, requires? Um, I look around the room and we talk about automation and I think everyone's in agreement that in the UK economy we need to automate and perhaps we're, we're being left behind a little bit. Um, it's needed for global competitivity. Um, but in, in, in what sense? Do we need lights out automation or is it a semi-automation? Well, you know, people talk about both. So that's the thing we've already been working on for, for years now and we'll be pushing into this factory as well. Um, and with this automation, we need this, the, the, the flexibility. So that's very important for our reconfigurable, uh, the nature of the factory. Quality is always a, always a driver uh, and going forward, this is going to be even more important uh, to lower concessions um, and, and, and improve the, um, the parts that are going out of the door. Um, one of the things that everyone's aware of as well, and I, and I touched on with our apprentice centre, is the lack of, uh, lack of skills and perhaps lack, lack of talent um, that, w that we're seeing coming into, the, into businesses now. Um, and really, the factory is transparent. Uh, it's, it's, it's a majority glass factory, and, and that's for good reason. It's to try and be transparent and show the younger generations that engineering is a, a credible career to go into and really to change the, uh, the image of engineering going forward. So I show again the, the Sheffield city site on the left hand side, perhaps not uh, necessarily an engineering site, but really just to show the difference and the contrast to the, uh, uh, the 787, the Boeing 787 production line on the right hand side. And this is the image we need to give of, of, of engineering if we are to attract the brightest, most talented people into engineering. Um, it's clean, it's clinical, it's smart, it's digitally controlled. Uh, this, this is all, all the sorts of things we need to push for, uh, not just in, in factories, but down the supply chain as well. So how are we going to achieve it? There's a few aspects to how we're going to achieve it. Um, but First of all, we, we need a building. So uh, we hope to hope to start building uh, come July next month. Um, and, and what we've what we've designed is a, is a is a flexible working environment. So we've got a flexible shop floor, floor where machines, uh, robots, fixturing can be moved very easily around. We've got a workflow that works in a in a circular motion, so that we've got ingress and egress of parts, products, materials at the same point. But we've also got modular, modular access. So the idea is that we can, we can bolt pods onto the side of the, the rotunda circular building to create focused line side support. This might include suppliers, this might include uh, consultants or design groups to come on, bolt a pod on and work very close to our engineers. Skipping to the bottom, uh, we've tried to create an iconic building. Uh, we're not saying that all, all, all factories of the future will be, will be round, uh, quite, quite the contrary really. Um, but we're hoping that it's going to be an iconic building, uh, predominantly glass, as I said, that so people can see in and really, really see what, what we're doing and what we're about. Um, and, and with that glass, we're hoping to create quite a nice, working, airy, um, bright environment that, 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 that's good to, uh, good to work in. It's got a central staff hub in the centre of the building with the offices on the ground floor to enable a quick movement from, from a shop floor environment to an office environment, try and break down the barriers between office and shop floor staff uh, and improve knowledge transfer. Um, 
flexible services, fully integrated services into the floors, uh, again, to, to, to be able to keep this flexible shop floor and high reconfigurability. So once we've got the building, um, what are we going to fill it with? Well, we're going to put some machines, uh, automation, robotics. Um, the machines we're looking, we're looking to put in and develop, really, are self-optimizing machines. So when I say that, there's, there's lots of different takes on that idea, but an example, really, would be where you've got a machine tool cutting a thin-walled uh, uh, thin structure, and, and, and it starts to chatter. Well, if the operator sees that or knows that, then they can change that, but we, we want to automate it. So the machines are in process sensing this, this type of behavior and actually reacting to that in a, in a, in a feedback loop. Uh, robotics and automation, as I touched on before, but how much of a lights out, how much human interaction. This is becoming a big topic in, in robotics and has been over, uh, over several years, but it's really coming to the fore now um, with force talk sensing robots that can work uh, in collaboration with, uh, with humans. Fixturing. Well, we're trying to get away from fixturing, really. Fixturing's uh, an on-cost that uh, we'd, we'd like to avoid. Um, but how can we create low-cost fixturing, rapid prototypes, quick fixturing that we, can, uh, that we can put on the line, change, reconfigure? Intelligent tools. This links very, very closely with kind of semi-automation. So augmented reality using iPads, using Google Glass. This, this type of technology that's been driven from the media industry um, and bringing this in together with things like intelligent torque wrenches, intelligent uh, gap and flush measurements, uh, vernier calipers, this, this kind of thing that can send information straight back into a database and help to optimize the process. Which leads on to big data. Uh, already been mentioned today, the, the Internet of Things and big data, um, and it will be a big part of, of, of what we're trying to do. Um, it, it, it's about the storage of this data, it's about the filtering of this data, and really about taking the data and making it useful. It's okay having big data, but it's what you do with it that counts, and, and, and that's, that's really going to be our focus. To surmise th 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 all those top points, really, we need a backbone of IT. Um, so PLM systems, MES systems, we're really looking, um, we get a, a lot of people talking about the integration of these systems and how they're very bespoke, very expensive. So we're going to start to look at other ways of generalizing this, um, looking at generic code where we can, where we can plug and play, much like, much like a, you know, a USB, for instance. Um, and then I know there's a, a, a talk later talking about the next generation of materials. We need to keep an eye on the next generation of materials, and we need to see where they could be applied in the manufacturing environment. The likes of you know, graphene and the new carbon composites that are coming to the fore we really need to keep an eye on those and, and, and use those where at all possible. So how to achieve it, people. Um, it's okay having the machines in the building, but without the people to run and program, um, program these machines, we're, we're absolutely useless. Um, there's certainly a trend for, uh, for knowledge and, and uh, lost through, through guys going into retirement age. Um, and, and someone said to me, a lot of the, the Boeing staff, in fact, 50% of the Boeing staff within five years will be eligible for retirement. That's quite frankly uh, really very scary, I think, uh, that all that knowledge, 50% of the company's knowledge could be left within five years. So we need to capture that knowledge. We need to capture it digitally, and then it can be transferred. It can be transferred to the, the bright, creative, well-educated staff that we need to bring into the businesses. Um, and building multidisciplinary teams, not just of engineers, but we need to look further afield. We need to look to, uh, to computer science, to the arts, all over, f for guys who are going to take, uh, be, you know, be the next engineering leaders. Uh, and, and, and really in our factory, this is more of a our factory kind of thing, but we're looking to build a culture. We've already got a, a great culture at the AMRC, but we're trying to lead this on and, and try and spread this culture of, of embracing new technology and not being too risk adverse. Um, we need to manage risk carefully. And then finally, the, the supply chain. I wasn't really sure it didn't really fit in any of the three slides, but um, the supply chain, or really the, the value chain, we need to develop. Um, it, it's, it's no good having a, a completely reconfigurable factory you know, on our little site in Sheffield. 
uh, if we haven't got a reconfigurable reactive supply chain that can react and, and work with our needs. So that's something we need to, we need to push out into, in, into the South Yorkshire, into North of England, to, into the UK um, and, and work with to, to develop. So the Factory 2050 site. Um, so the bottom left, you can see the, uh, the wind turbine and that's the existing uh, AMRC site. Um, the Factory 2050 will actually go on the uh, Sheffield Airport site. So it's the old Sheffield Airport site, uh, no longer been used and we've, we've purchased some land on there uh, and it will be going towards this bottom end. Although what you see there is, is the master plan to actually uh, push up um, and, and develop that entire site. Uh, so again, another uh, architect's image of the uh, of the factory. We can see probably more clearly uh, the fact that it's glass and these areas where we might have this modular access for suppliers or uh, or customers. We've also got the longer building uh, on, on the side, which will be uh, which will take care of any sensitive projects, any light dependent projects, because we do realise it's a glass factory and that doesn't mix too well. Um, and any existing projects, uh, aerospace site projects where we've got much bigger uh, manufacturing cells. Here's an image from, from the inside. Uh, so it's a, a, I might add it's an architect's uh, image. Uh, it might not look like this. <laughs> um, but you can see the robotics around the outside um, and a central hub of offices on the ground floor, a social and meeting area on the middle floor and on the top floor, we've got virtual reality and uh, conferencing facilities combined. This is a possible factory flow. This is kind of something that's, that's uh, a work in progress, really. Um, but we're hoping that we can flow around the factory and, uh, and, the, and the parts can reconfigure and uh, machines can move in and out of this flow line. So this is the grand plan, really. This is. Uh, that these, these are our director's plans to, to uh, develop the AMR campus. Um, so the Advanced Manufacturing Research Campus will push out that way. And then we see industrial growth really pushing up the M1 corridor um, into some of the old industrial buildings because traditionally Sheffield had its city centre uh, and, and the manufacturing kind of spoked out from the middle. But we really see it driving up the M1 corridor now um, and we're hoping that the, uh, the AMRC can... Uh, can really, really drive that and develop it. So in summary, factories of the future and our factory of the future, it won't just be a building and it won't just be the, the technology that we put inside the building, um, but it, it will be all of these things uh, combined with the best staff. Uh, and, and really that's, that's probably one of our main things is, is, is to develop the staff and develop the talent um, and get those guys working on, on all this new technology. <coughs>